begin. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody to the third day of the workshop Markov Partitions and Young Towers. So the first lecture of today will be given by Jian Yu Chen from the nice city of Suzhou. So he works on, at Suzhou University. Yes. And he will talk about Markov partitions for hyperbolic systems with singularities. So please, Jian Yu. Okay, thank you, Yuri. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present a recent work. Uh, this is a joint work which uh, Fang Wang, uh, Hong Kong Zhang. Uh, we are uh, constructing the mark partition for hyperbolic systems with singularities. But uh, mostly those kind of uh, systems are like uh, BDA systems. So most of the talk, actually I'm going to uh, start with the uh, BDA setting. This is the outline of my talk. Uh, as I said, first, uh, the setting of uh, hy uniform hyperbolic system with singularities is kind of uh, complicated. There are five standard assumptions uh, extracting from a paper by Chen of uh, Hong Kong Zhang. So uh, I would like to give uh, everyone a warm up on why these assumptions uh, are needed. So I would like to record something about the Sinai dispersing failures. And then I will give the general assumptions. Then I will give a kind of a short overview on the uh, current results, which are closely related to the Mark partitions, Young Towers, and the statistical properties for BDR light systems. And then I will present our main results and give the in the ingredients of the proof. So here's uh, where the Sinai dispersing beers uh, come from. Uh, we study a uh, Laurent's ideal gas model uh, in an ideal way. So basically we look at the uh, uh, molecule gas, like a single particle. And we would like to study the motion of this particle. Uh, well, when there's no collisions, it's just uh, moving in a unit speed. But if there are some uh, scatters, which are just other uh, gas molecules, then uh, you may an uh, elastic collision. But to uh, make this model a uh, mathematical problem, actually we need to add assumptions, something like we would like to say, oh, those scatters are arranged in a periodic way. And then we can actually just look at the phase space, uh, not, not phase space, look at the uh, uh, table like this. So we are just looking at one single chamber, which is uh, identify with the two torus, but uh, there are some scatters inside, like here. Uh, we have one uh, scatters, which is inside the two torus, and then uh, four scatters on the four corners. And to study a motion uh, of a billiard board, so we are looking at the, the uh, gas molecules, like billiard ball, we actually just uh, study the collision map of this billiard ball, meaning that uh, we study the collision, the trajectory of collision points. So in this picture uh, on the left, uh, we can actually uh, coordinate uh, the orbit of this uh, billiard ball using two coordinates. One is the location on the uh, collision uh, place of the scatter. Another is the reflection angle, uh, which uh, respect to the normal of the scatters. So this is kind of a standard setting. Then of course you say, 
there might be some uh, disconnected scatters, but ideally you can actually gluing them together to make a circle in a, a base. And then for the reflection angle, well, it's ranging from minus pi O2 to pi O2. And maybe. Now for a collision map, it just sent to uh, one collision point to the next one. So we actually uh, denote it by X equal to R phi to the next point S1. And but here you see there's actually some normally effective collision like the grazing. So for instance, like this. So at this point, there's a grazing and this grazing collision actually creates some discontinuities. So on one side, if you go a little left, it cries on the center scatter. But if you go right, then it goes away. So, uh, we actually have some singularities, preliminary singularities as zero on the uh, angle minus uh, plus or minus pi or two. Now, uh, for the collision map, well, uh, geometrically it's hard to study, but uh, actually using some differential geometry, it, it is easy to derive the difference of the tensor map. Actually, this formula is actually uh, derived in a book by Chen of Markolian. It's a very really standard uh, formula. So let me explain uh, the parameters here. So here, K and K1 are just the absolute curvature of the collision points on S and S1. And the tau is what we call free pass, which is the length of the string connecting S and S1 in the table. Now, if you look at this formula, uh, say you are looking at just a purely point of the tangent map, you will see that uh, this, uh, this matrix, two by two matrix is actually hyperbolic, but uh, there's some unpleasant effect causing by this factor, uh, which is cosine phi one on the denominator. So it means that when you, uh, near grazing collision, the tensor map will blow up. So in other words, the tensor map is only defined uh, outside this set we call S1. Uh, actually here I should write this way. S1, which is just uh, the preliminary uh, singularity union with the pre-image of SGL. Now, uh, the situation is that because of this uh, tangent map blows up at near S1, then uh, uh, the distortion control is hard to get. So here's the idea by Xinlai, uh, in which he added some what we call homogeneous singularities. So let's go back to the picture. Uh, we are going to add some uh, additional singularity lines, which are those dot lines, which are given by the pi or two minus one over k square, where k is a large number. So those are what we call homogeneous singularities. Now, which of those homogeneous singularities, we can somehow regain the distortion control, at least in a local way. Now, we are going uh, to uh, combine SGL, the preliminary uh, singularities and the uh, homogeneous singularities all together and denote it by this uh, curved uh, SGL. Okay, so this is uh, uh, basically uh, the setting of uh, Sinai dispersing billiards. Now you see the uh, basic complexity comes from the uh, distributions or say the structures of singularities. Also, we need to uh, control the tensor map near the singularities. So to generalize uh, this uh, 
since I believe uh, to some general setting, we actually consider some piecewise invertible map on two dimensional compact smooth manifold. So of course here we need to add several assumptions. Well, uh, to be honest, uh, when I first learned uh, those assumptions from Professor Hong Kong Zhang, well, it's, it looks kind of complicated to me. Uh, it's like uh, um, three or five, four pages of those assumptions, which is uh, for, for me, uh, there uh, is kind of difficult to understand if you just look at this thing for the first time. But uh, still, I, I need to go through all, all, these, go over the, all these assumptions so that we can move on to the, uh, our main results. Uh, so first of all, uh, let me uh, emphasize that uh, we only consider two-dimensional manifold. So for higher dimension, uh, I don't see that uh, we can generalize easily. Now also, uh, this will require that this map is piecewise invertible and piecewise uh, C two smooth. Actually, you can uh, we can to a C one plus alpha, and also because for the billion we have a time reversible property, which is kind of uh, useful sometimes. Now we need to add uh, the following assumptions. The first one is uniform hyperbolicity. The second one is kind of uh, complicated but crucial, which is uh, about the uh, structure of singularities. And the third one is about the uh, regularity of stable and unstable manifolds, uh, which is actually uh, kind of standard in a uh, differential uh, dynamical systems. And the fourth one is also, well, we assume that there's a SRB measure and we take a missing component. And the last one is, I guess it's again a feature in uh, BDS light systems, it's called one state expansion. So let me explain uh, turn by turn. Uh, so, first of all, uh, to rep uh, represent uh, the uniform hyperbolicity in the BDS systems, what we can do is that uh, we can establish the family of unstable, stable conf, combs. So those uh, combs are a continuous family. And then when the derivative uh, or the tangent map is well-defined, then we should assume that those uh, combs are invariant, meaning that uh, the unstable comb should be forward invariant and the state comb should be backward invariant. And also, uh, a vector in the unstable comb will be uniformly expanded by the factor uh, lambda. And the uh, vector in a stable count, well, if you take the derivative of, of uh, the in inverse map of T, then you will be expanded again by the factor lambda. And also here we assume that uh, the unstable and stable counts are uniformly bounded away from zero. Now for Sinai dispersing billiards, well, uh, there's a, we can actually give a precise formula for the unstable count, unstable count. Well, it's just, uh, if you go back to the phase space picture, it's just uh, a, a count which represents all the vectors which slope greater than the curvature by, the, by finite. This is unstable vectors in the unstable comp. And the stable vectors are just uh, the opposite. So uh, here I'm drawing the unstable curve and stable curves, which you see the unstable curves are the red ones, which are increasing, and the stable ones are decreasing. Those green ones are decreasing. So this is the uniform hyperbolicity. And the second one is a little bit complicated. It's about the uh, fine structure of singularities. So as I said, so we take the curve as zero to be the preliminary singularity, namely pi 2 and minus pi 2 plus 
all the uh, uh, homogeneous, homogeneous singularities. And then the, we take S1 to be uh, S0 union with T uh, <coughs> inverse S0. And S minus one will be the other way. So what we can see here is that uh, the S1 is exactly the singularity for the uh, collision map. And the S minus one will be the singularity for the inverse map. And also we need to assume uh, some uh, structures on those uh, singularity set, S1 and S minus one. Well, they consist of finite or countably many curves, smooth curves. And also they are uh, uniformly transverse to the stable and stable combs. And uh, uh, if you uh, disregard the uh, S0, meaning pi O2 and minus pi O2, uh, the curves, which are new, uh, new singularity from S1 should be stable curves, meaning it should be decreasing in the phase space. And um, S minus one should be unstable curve, meaning it's increasing. Also, the, each curve in the singularity S1 or S minus one will be terminate either on S0 or on the uh, singularity S1. Okay, and there's another assumption is that uh, the tangent map, although we know it blow up near the singularity S1, but uh, it should not blow up too fast. So it's actually controllable by the distance of the point to the singularity S1 to the minus Q's power, where Q is a uh, uh, number less than one. So this is the second assumption on the structure of singularities. Okay, now the thing is that uh, we can uh, iterate the singularities a little more times to get the uh, singularity of Tn, I mean the nth power of the collision map, which we denote by Sn. And also, the, if we, uh, Italy backward, we get a singularity of the uh, inverse map, the nth power of inverse map. Now also we take the union of all four uh, singularity like SM and take the union from M from zero to infinity, then this will be usually for BDA systems as plus infinity will be dense in the whole phase space. Now, also, if you take S minus infinity, it be also it could be dense. Now, what's happening in the uh, in this situation? Well, again, we are only looking at a two-dimensional case. So there's an argument by Chernoff. Well, he actually uh, used those singularities to uh, build some uh, curve linear polygons to approximate the stable and unstable manifolds. So in other words, uh, the local maximum stable manifold would be exactly the open kinetic curve uh, in the M, which uh, get which, which those S plus infinity remove. Now the local maximum unstable manifold would be the other way. And so, you see the stable and un unstable manifolds, local manifolds will be, can be up here short in the phase space. Also those short curve uh, manifolds could be very dense. Okay, so that's the consequence of the structure of singularities. But I guess it only works in two dimensional case. Now let's talk about the third uh, assumption. Well, this assumption is kind of standard in differentiable dynamical systems. So now we have uh, families of stable manifolds and unstable manifolds. We write to uh, add some additional assumptions, but not too restrict. So first of all, we write to assume, well, those local 
uh, manifolds has boundary curvature and uh, uh, boundary lengths. Well, this is always doable because we are actually consider a uh, compact manifold. So we can always chop uh, long stable, uh, uh, long unstables to small pieces by adding some additional singularities. Now for the second one and the third one, the statement, well, this is a kind of uh, standard. Well, first of all, we would like to say that uh, along the unstable manifold, we have the Lord Jacobian uh, has, uh, is uh, ho locally holder. So by Lord Jacobian, I mean, this is the Jacobian uh, which should respect to the Riemannian volume induced on the unstable manifold. So this JW means the Jacobian which should respect to the Riemannian volume, leaf volume. And uh, also we would like to say the uh, stable holonomy is absolutely continuous. But here we need to be a little bit careful because uh, as I said, there will be some short uh, stable and unstable manifolds. So even we take two long uh, unstable manifolds, W and W2 close to each other, well, the stable holonomy map are not defined on the whole uh, unstable manifolds. We can only take uh, usually they are just a subset, so let's do it by W star one and W star two. But anyway, as long as we can define a stable holonomy, well, uh, this map is absolutely continuous and uh, the uh, Jacobian is a boundary holder. And the fourth assumption is that uh, we would like to assume that uh, the system has a missing SRP measure. So what's SRP measure? Well, it means that uh, the conditional measure on each unstable uh, manifold is absolutely continuous, which should respect to the Riemannian leaf volume. Now, of course, uh, in our setting, we did not assume anything. So uh, it could be that uh, there's uh, several SRP measures so we can just take one of the SRB measure and take the basin to be our phase space. So this is just a, a technical assumption. And also we can take missing components. So why don't we just assume that this SRB measure is missing? Okay, now, uh, now for back to the Sinai dispersing beer, you see that uh, the SRB measure is exactly a smooth measure which is equivalent to the volume. So this is the precise formula, cosine phi drd phi, where the constant C in front of it is just a normalizing factor to make this uh, probability measure. Okay. Now, the last assumption that uh, is kind of specific for billion systems, what we call, we call it a one-step expansion. So the situation is, well, due to the singularities, maybe I should draw a picture. This is a W, a local unstable manifold. Then when you apply the collision map, it might be cut by the S minus one into finitely many or countably many pieces. Some pieces are long, some pieces are short. Now, we call those uh, components uh, V alpha. And then the pre image of V alpha, we denote it by W alpha. Now, this one state uh, string condition uh, is essentially saying that uh, this, if you look at the bedward iterations, it tells you the uh, bed, there's a uh, some summable bedward contractions for uh, uh, unstable curve, which is short enough. So here we have a parameter S over here saying that, well, we take this uh, sum. Well, this is loose wheel, but I'll explain it in, uh, by Sinai dispersing billions. So this is kind of like a witty sum 
uh, and this weighted sign uh, will be uh, less than one if we take a small, uh, uh, unstable manifold, which is a small size, let's say less than delta. Now, uh, as I said, uh, if we take S equal to one, meaning in a situation of Sinai dispersing billions, well, the situation is much, uh, this formula is much uh, better to understand. So we just take the bevel contraction, meaning the quotient given by W alpha divided by its image V alpha. So this is just uh, bevel contraction rate. For the uh, this component, and then you sum them together. As long as the uh, unstable curve is short enough, then the, this sum will be less than one, uniformly less than one. That's the setting of one state expansion. Okay, so finally I'm finishing the all the assumptions. Now, besides the Sinai dispersing billions. What kind of BDS system satisfy these assumptions? Well, uh, you can look at the uh, conservation perturbations of dispersing BDS. So those conservation perturbations sometimes are caused by the external force, or sometimes you can consider some non-elastic reflections which kiss and slips. Okay, this, uh, this kind of, uh, Perturbation were considered by the Chernoff and also that uh, Mark Demers and Hong Kong Zhang. And also, uh, when we are doing dealing with some uh, non uniformly hyperbolic bilious, like Bonimoichi bilious or semi dispersing bilious, sometimes uh, we can actually uh, take a nice or say good subset uh, in take a Pankhart return map to get uh, the induced map to satisfy those assumptions. So for example, if we consider a Bonimoichi stadium, like this standard one, then we can actually take the subset to be the half, uh, left half circle and the right half circle. And then you see when you induce the dynamics in these two half circles, it actually gives you the uniform hyperbolic systems. The induced system is uniform hyperbolic and also certify the other uh, conditions on singularities. So uh, the Pankhart return map of some uh, like polymorphic bilious or semi dispersing bilious also satisfy those uh, standard assumptions. Now, okay. Now let me uh, give a brief overview on the Mark partitions and uh, Young Tars and also statistical properties for uh, BDA systems or some system closely related to BDA systems. Uh, the first one will be still be for the C9 dispersing BS. Uh, in 1980, turn off. Uh, so maybe I made a mistake here. I think this one is Bunimochi and Sinai. In 1980s, uh, they constructed a uh, quantum Marcus partition for planar Sinai beers with some restrictions. And then in 1990s, Bunimochi, uh, turn off, and Sinai, they actually constructed. Uh, uh, the mark partition for planar Sinai billiards still with finite horizon, uh, for, but for a large class, also uh, they use some new mass. Uh, but unfortunately, this uh, counter mark partition only give you uh, the symbolic coding by countable states. So in other words, you can only look at uh, the uh, Sinai dispersing bias as a uh, topological count uh, countable Markov shift, but uh, without some additional structure, you do not know 
uh, the decay rate at all. So they actually use some uh, geometry analysis to obtain the stretch as partial decay calculations in 1991. Now, <coughs> uh, drastic improvement is actually due to less than year in 1998 and 1999, uh, which is nowadays called uh, a tool called Yang Tao. She actually uh, use this kind of tools to prove the exponential decay of correlations for Sinai bias with finite horizon, but without counterpoints. So as we know, uh, Yang Ta is not a mark partition, it's actually just a mark of extension. Now, in the same year, Chen Of actually is painting uh, the tools uh, by Yang Ta, of Yang Ta to the case of infinite horizon, and also uh, he could do for the uh, case when uh, you you have uh, corner points. Well, this is for the Sinai bit case. Now for the non-uniform hyperbolic bit uh, it's actually much harder. So after uh, Yang published her paper in 1998, after five years, well, Macaulay actually made a breakthrough using Yang Tao's to prove that uh, the Mugunimoshi Stadium has a polynomial missing ray of uh, this is uh, of uh, this order. But this order is just an upper bound; it's not uh, an optimal bound. And then also, uh, in two thousand and five, Chen of uh, Hong Kong Jam establish the polynomial missing rays for semi-dispersing billiards and bonimoji billiards, some bonimoji billiards, but still they can did not get rid of the uh, logarithm term in the estimate. And then uh, in 2008, they improved to the uh, optimal order, which is one over n. Okay, so this is, uh, the results uh, related to closely related to the billiard systems. Now, uh, well, if we look at the Yang Tao's, there are actually two in ingredients. So both uh, requires hard work. So one is the contraction of the uh, base, meaning the hyperbolic product set. Also, we need to verify uh, all the assumptions of Yang Tao on the base. And then the other hard work is on how do we do a tail estimate, meaning that uh, when the tail is exponential, when the tail is polynomial, uh, for concrete systems, sometimes it's hard to estimate. So, but here, let me uh, concentrate on the construction of the base. So uh, there are two, uh, words that I want to mention. One is by Chen of and Zhang in 2009, they actually uh, post this uh, standard assumption H1 to H5, uh, and then they use the Gopia's standard pairs method to prove the coupling lemma, and hence the expansion decay and central limit theory and so on. And the other one is also uh, is by Mark Demers and also Hong Kong Zhang. Um, they prove they uh, actually uh, use a different method, meaning they use transfer operators on some anisotropy bundle space and do a functional analysis, but still get something like uh, existence of SRB measure, exponential decay, and central limit series. Okay, so. Let me just make a comment for the Yang Tower, which are suitable for billiards. Actually, well, in Yang's paper, she constructed the Yang Tower for a Sinai dispersing billiards with finite horizon. And then, uh, Chen Of and Zhang also have some ideas, but they do not use the language of Yang Tower, but still, uh, what they still need is the base. Uh, well, the base is kind of like a hyperbolic product set, but in the Turn off usually uh, actually like to call it a magnet. 
because it kind of attracts a lot of uh, unstable manifolds uh, when the unstable uh, under the iterates. Okay, now for the uh, construction of Yang tiles for billiards, usually you see the high function R is usually just a stopping time. It's not necessarily to be a first return time. Okay, now I think it's a, a good place to uh, present our result and I made some remarks. So uh, back to our uh, assumptions, we consider a two-dimensional compact smooth manifold and then we have a piecewise invertible, uh, I forgot piecewise smooth, and also time reversible map, satisfy those five standard assumptions. Now, under these assumptions, uh, we prove that uh, the collision map, uh, not, not necessarily to be collision map, the map T uh, means uh, countable Markov partitions of RPC small size, which is back to the SRB measure. Um, moreover, uh, this, kind, this partition has a exponential tail. By exponential tail, I mean, well, our partition is essentially uh, Young Tower, but uh, the uh, return map, uh, the return time is exactly the first return. So it's a first return Young Tower. And then uh, look at the return, the tail of return time is exponential. Okay, so our improvement is on uh, the situation is that uh, we actually construct uh, the Markov partition instead of the Yang Tao, which is a Markov extension. Now, I think it's a good place to uh, make some remarks. And actually, I would like to ask some questions for, for Yuri and Carlos. So, uh, so uh, Lima and Matthews actually they constructed countable mark partitions for uh, uniform or non-uniform hyperbolic billion mass for general hyperbolic measures, meaning uh, high hyperbolic measures. So um, they use the technique, symbolic coding technique, originally developed by Omisari. So, but uh, I'm not sure. So Yuli, uh, I'm not sure what's the situation right now. Uh, do you get some tail estimates for the uh, this kind of uh, mal partition or? No, and we uh, also are not able to get anything about the existence of measures of maximum entropy. So this okay. is actually a difficulty because the measure could be concentrated towards the singular set. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see, I see. So Baladi and Demers, they have a work that shows the existence and uniqueness. But for that, <laughs> they use the machinery of anisotropic spaces. So it makes it much more complicated and long. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, they are able to prove the existence and uniqueness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see, I see. So yeah, I have another question because uh, well, uh, in Matthew's talk, actually, this is the first time I know you actually uh, uh, weaken the assumptions by turn off and jump to some uh, turn off assumptions. But I'm wondering what's the difference between uh, those uh, standard assumptions in BDS and uh, turn off assumptions. I believe uh, our assumption is kind of stronger, but I'm not sure if the turn off assumptions also implies the assumptions H1 to H5. I think it does. So the, actually what Chernov did was thinking about the billiards in order to develop his axioms. Okay. okay. The difference is that in Mateus' talk, he only required a uniformly C1 plus Lipschitz regularity of the invariant mm -hmm. manifolds. Mm -hmm. And the original Chernov's just like, as you stated, requires bounded curvature. So it's kind of specific to Uh, also, Chernoff's axioms, they uh, work in any dimension and they're oh. quite general. So instead of 
for example, the one-step expansion that you require, he just requires the growth mm -hmm. lemma to be satisfied. Okay, of course, the I question see. is, uh, when is the growth lemma satisfied? Okay, I see. It. I see, I see. Ah. So you can apply this uh, essence to any dimension. Huh. It, I yeah, think his, his a... work is multidimensional. Okay, it, isn't, okay. I isn't this uh, Balint, Balint, Balint and co-authors that extended? Balint and co-authors also check the conditions of journal. Okay, I see, I see. Okay, it's good to know because this is the first time I learned this kind of uh, turn of science, which can could be much weaker than looks like much weaker than our assumptions, which is much which is good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's move on. So now I I'm going to uh, present uh, a sketch of proof. So uh, Jenny, can I ask a yes, question? Yes. So hi. Sure. Um. So. Uh, you said before, so I guess two two questions. One is that I guess you get the mark of partition because your young tower is the first turn, young tower. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, and um, the fact that you have exponential tail means you have exponential decay of correlations. Is that right? Yes, yes. All right. So how does that match up with the previous results? You talked about some polynomial decay of correlation. Or was that for the Bumirov, which? Uh, yeah, yeah. So the thing is that uh, for Bonimoche stadiums or the general Bonimoche uh, billiards, you can first find a good, good subset such that the first return, Pankaj first return map is exactly satisfy our assumptions. So you actually construct a mark position for the first return map and you leave to the whole space, you still get uh, the mark position for this uh, non uniform hyperbolic billiards. But in this case, you do not have exponential tails. And uh, no, no exponential tails. The tail estimates is still the same as before uh, by Markolian or Chen of and Zhang. The, uh, uh, the tail bounds are stays the same. The tail, so, yeah. So which one of your assumptions H1 to H5 is not satisfied in the Bonimovich billiard? Uh, not satisfied. At the uniform hyperbolicity, right? The ah, right. Of course, yeah. of course, yes. of course, yes, 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 of course. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the proof of many results is actually uh, kind of four steps. The first step is actually. Uh, already done by Chernoff, uh, also Lai San Yang. So it's uh, just a construction of a hyperbolic product set, or say a magnet. And then the second stage is that uh, we we'll write to decompose those, uh, this magnet or hyperbolic product set into S subsets, union of S subsets. Uh, there, there's quite a lot of way, but uh, here we are using coupling lemma. And uh, then we are going to construct what we call a perfect magnet which is uh, kind of similar to the nice uh, property of uh, the talk by uh, Professor Payson on Monday. And then finally, with those perfect property, then we can actually prove the first return is exactly a mark of, in other words, the Yang Tower that built over this perfect magnet, R star is uh, first return Yang Tower. So first, uh, this is kind of well known by Lai San Yang and also by Ch uh, Chen of, you can look at the Chen of McLean's book. So we will, usually for BDA systems or some general hyperbolic uh, systems with singularities, we can construct hyperbolic product set. Uh, hyperbolic product set, which are just formed by a family of, uh, Relative long stables and relative long, long unstables. So usually our notation would be uh, gamma u represents the family of unstable and intersect with the family of stables. Now, 
also because we already have a reference measure, which is secondary SRB measure mu, so we require that uh, this uh, hyperbolic product set of positive measure. Now, uh, the reason that we can construct such a set in the BDS system is actually due to the so-called Sinai's fundamental lemma. So it says the following. So if you take a point X, which is not in a uh, S infinity, not in a singularity. So uh, for any Q, which is between zero and one, um, for any uh, constant A, we can actually uh, get uh, a neighborhood of X, unstable neighborhood of X, such that uh, the, for any piece of unstable leaf, well, there should be long enough stables cross this uh, uh, unstable leaf. So in ours, there are a lot of points which we denote by Y, such that the size of stable. So RSY uh, denotes the size of stable stay out of this unstable manifold, which is greater than uh, a multiple of the length of W. And those points will off uh, problem measure of portion uh, greater than one minus Q. So uh, in other words, if you shrink the neighborhood size of neighborhood, you can actually get uh, more and more to, uh, points on this unstable, which long enough uh, stable manifolds. So in this way, you can also require that uh, the Density, which is back to the SRP measure of this magnet or of this hyperbolic product set, is uh, close to one. So, for instance, like uh, close uh, greater than 0.99. Excuse me, Genu. Yes. So, this statement holds for every A? Uh, for every A, yes. Uh, it because, looks, well, it, it looks like you are saying that. Everything, almost everything has an arbitrarily long size. Yes, yes. So, uh, well, you see, it, it, only, it also depends on the size of neighborhood. So if you take a very, very short and stable length, there are a lot of stables which are uh, relative long. But as long, I mean, they can be like a thousand or a million. Uh, yes, then in this case, the, this neighborhood will be very, very small. Ah, okay, because W is small. Okay, yeah. I see. Yes. Thank you. No problem. Okay, then the second step is that uh, we like to use the uh, Take a knee uh, of standard pair and standard family uh, divided by the Gopia to do a coupling. So now we can define the, in this way, we can define the SR sets of the, a magnet or, or, or hyperbolic product set. So, but here we, I need to recall some definitions of standard pairs and standard families. Uh, so, roughly speaking, a standard pair is simply uh, unstable manifold carry a probability measure such that this probability measure is absolutely continuous with respect to the, uh, here we use the conditional measure of mu on this unstable manifold W. And also we require the log, uh, log reason of the London uh, Lincoln derivative is uh, C gamma holder. Well, C and gamma are just some first constant at the beginning. And then, uh, what's this is standard, called standard pair, uh, meaning just a uh, unstable manifold taken uh, some uh, a regular density probability measure. Now, uh, the standard family is simply uh, combinations of uh, standard pairs in a way that uh, we have, well, maybe uncountable. Uh, many of uh, standard pairs, then uh, we need to index it by some index set, say this 
eight. And then we need to uh, have some measure we call lambda on this index set such that uh, we can uh, com combine these uh, standard, uh, low standard pairs together to get a new uh, finite measure. And this is what we call standard family. Now, uh, for our coupling lemma, we also introduce a so-called generalized standard family. Well, in this part, we do need to fix a uh, hyperbolic product set R. Ah. And then to, uh, we take a standard family restricted on this hyperbolic product set and take its unsplitting image. This kind of, this object is what we call generalized standard family. What you can see is that uh, it's still uh, a combination of several pre-image curves. So, and then we take some uh, measures on each curves, but uh, those measures are no longer uh, regular, meaning uh, they are not a standard pairs for each curve. Uh, they don't take standard pairs, but uh, uh, the images of standard pairs. Okay, now, uh, well, uh, usually when we do coupling, actually we take two problem standard families and then couple them together. But here, for our case, we would like to construct uh, uh, market partitions. In this step, we would like to study the the S set. So how do I get the S subsets? Well, we do a self-coupling. So we consider the family of the unstable uh, family of uh, the, the family of unstable manifolds of the magnet itself. So let me record I is just gamma U intersect with gamma S. So we take the unstable family as our underlying uh, uh, curves for the standard family. And then we just take the sub measure mu, meaning on each curve, we just take a conditional measure of mu to do a standard pair. Then we have a self coupling lemma saying that uh, we can actually decompose uh, this standard family into the sum of the generalized standard families. So here, W and mu and are generalized standard families, meaning that they are just uh, pre-image of some standard family intersect with the uh, magnet. And also, uh, by, our, uh, by our assumptions, we can also make sure the image of uh, mu and meaning the uh, uh, generalized standard families of index N um, of index M, their image under the uh, TN push four and TN push four, they have disjoint supports if N is not equal to M. And also uh, the coupling lemma uh, actually also guarantee us we have a uh, uh, exponential tail, meaning that uh, the uh, measure that we do not couple after N steps will be exponential small. Okay, now we should this simple coupling lemma. We can simply define the support of mu n to be the S subset because you see it's just a pre image, unsplit image of some the unstable uh, of the unstable family gamma u taken with some measure. Now the image of TNS. is exactly the support of TN uh, push forward mu n. So uh, of course here, uh, there might be several components uh, of uh, the n step as subset. So we can actually go on to decompose it into several components. By those components, I mean, if you go on to decompose them, then the, the iterates of collision map on the solid rectangle containing each 
of lamb would be smooth. Uh, here I forgot J here. Is C2 is smooth, extendable to the solid rectangle. And similarly, we have the, we can also decompose the user sets into uh, several components. And then we have some uh, destroying uh, decomposition of SR set as well as user set, and they are actually corresponding to each other. So that's the second part, second step. And the third step is that uh, we would like to uh, get a mute um, hyperbolic product set such that uh, it satisfies what we call perfect property. So what's perfect? Actually, this is mentioned by uh, Professor Payson in Monday's talk. Well, he has to, uh, a nice domain, uh, which have uh, PLD points on the diagonals, corners. So uh, in that case, you see the four iterates of the stable boundary will never enter the interior of the rectangle. And the bevel uh, iterates of the unstable boundary will never enter the interior. And uh, for this property, we will call it perfect. But uh, here we do not uh, actually require the uh, diagonal kernel points to be purely points. Okay, then uh, this is uh, what we describe a solid rectangle to be a perfect rectangle. Now, if, the, if we have a hyperbolic product set, then we can actually take the solid rectangle, carry this hyperbolic product set. If this solid rectangle U art is perfect, then we call a magnet or say this hyperbolic product set is perfect. Now, uh, the thing is that we would like to construct uh, such a uh, solid rectangle first, and then uh, we can uh, get a perfect uh, magnet. Then we are going to do a coupling lemma again on this perfect magnet to get a SR set, user set. In that case, uh, once you have a perfect magnet, those SR set and user set will actually give you the first return decomposition. So uh, let me just give the idea of how to construct such uh, perfect solid rectangles. So, uh, first of all, uh, when we have this, uh, when we get a matter, I mean, have a body product set, we actually already get SR sets. Now we can take two SR sets, which are compatible. So maybe I should show you the picture. So here, we take two SR sets. One is labeled by A, the other is labeled by B. And I'm, for you, I mean the solid rectangle containing these SR sets. And then also by symmetry, they are also uh, corresponding uh, to the A, there's U SR sets and B, uh, U SR sets for A and B. Now the situation is that uh, we would like to get uh, uh, con consider a purely point corresponding to a symbolic codes, which is like this. Now you see, it means that uh, uh, this is a purely point it stays in the cylinder A for quite a lot of times, let's say a large time M, and then it goes to B and then go back to N. So it's a, it's a point like this. It stays in uh, the cylinder, the A part for a while, then goes to B, and then goes to, goes to B, and then goes to A immediately. Now the thing is that once we have uh, this kind of uh, period orbit, uh, when N is large enough, then uh, actually we can prove that uh, uh, for the, uh, maybe I should use this. So, 
So we can prove that uh, once we have some point of like this period of go back to this square or say rectangle, meaning the intersection of US and UA, U, and then uh, if we have point go back here, then the unstable manifolds and um, stable manifolds of, of this uh, point will be long enough to cross both uh, uh, in the U direction and S direction. And then we can actually take uh, a smaller rectangle formed by S0 and FS0, which is the F is the return map for the original uh, magnet. We look at this uh, red rectangle, and then we count there may be several uh, points from the orbit of S0 uh, go, going inside this rectangle, but it's fine because they have long stable and long unstables, which you can cross these smaller uh, rectangles. So we can solve these uh, rectangles to get, uh, for example, because there are only finite period points, there are only finite many intersections. So for example, I can to this part, and this part will be uh, a perfect solid rectangle. I can simply take this small piece, which is a solid, uh, perfect solid rectangle. And then we can take this solid rectangle and combining all its uh, long stable and long uh, unstables to get a new magnet, which we denote by R star. And this way, this uh, magnet R star is actually perfect. And of course, you have potential mu measure because it actually contains the original magnet intersect with this uh, solid rectangle U star. Okay, so that's the third step. Now, the last step should be uh, easy to understand. Now, if we have a perfect uh, rectangle, a, a perfect magnet, then we do a couple of lemma again, then we get the decomposition of S subset and U subset, then you can see by this uh, boundary, meaning the perfect condition, or say the boundary restrictions, well, uh, the return, uh, Markov return has to be first return. Because it's, if it is not, if you look, look at each picture, if you say you have at some step, you actually intersect uh, uh, the, the rectangle or the intersect the magnet, but not fully crossed, then there should be the boundary, a piece of the boundary, this is S boundary, will go inside the interior of the perfect uh, solid rectangle at some state. So this is the first step, which, well, it's actually uh, easy to understand, but you have to uh, consider case, uh, several cases. This is just one of the picture. Okay. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. So let's thank Jan Yu for, for his talk. And I believe we have time for some uh, quick questions. So let, let me just ask a quick question here. Sure, uh, sure. So do you have expectation to do something similar for the Bunimovic Stadium? Uh... Well, depend on what kind of question. So, uh, here we are technically only uh, useful for like SRB measure because you see we are using coupling, but for the coupling technique, actually uh, the limit of those standard families are just uh, SRB measure. So, uh, I'm not sure how to uh, do it for a general hyperbolic measures using this technique. But even for SRB, for SRB, you can get a kind of Markov partition for the induced. Yes, for the induced. yes. For the SRB, first we get the SRB, uh, we get Markov partition for the uh, induced map, and then uh, because of the induced map in our situation for Bunimovich stadiums is just uh, the Pankhara first return, so we can mm -hmm. just uh, just leave it again. It's still a uh, 
uh, mathematician. Okay. Thanks. But uh, oh. as I said, uh, we, uh, it seems that we did not get any new uh, statistical properties in this way because it already taken care by Lesson Yang also turn off for the polynomial yeah. decay rate. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, so just one question. So what, what um, uh, why ex exactly where, how do you use the assumption that you already have an SRB measure? You should be able to replace that assumption by whatever, uh, you know, properties you're using of this SRB measure. So uh, the thing is that actually those assumptions are uh, like SRB measure assumptions, some, some uh, simplified uh, assumptions. But uh, if you uh, uh, make some assumptions on the uh, uh, derivative or se second order derivative near the singular, singular set, then by the result can talk and um, stretching, actually you can construct uh, some uh, SRB measures if I remember correctly. So with if you have some more controls on the derivatives or second order derivatives near boundary, we can actually construct the SRB measures right. in and this I guess situation. You, uh, yeah. I guess you probably but, would need some assumptions on the recurrence to the single uh, yes, points, yes. right? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, so those are implicit uh, in the existence of the SRB measure. Yes, okay. yes. We also need recurrence, right. yes. Right. So, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we are a little behind the schedule. So let's uh, thank Janu again. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'll just to allow, Okay, and just to allow people to have some water and to switch between uh, speakers, let's start in five minutes, okay? <laughs> 